Welcome back everyone. Today I'm at the All Saints Parish Church in Bingley. And it's the first time I'm here and it's a beautiful church. And today's blog is about a military, uh, military subject. And for the viewers out there who like the military history will hopefully like this blog. Because in this church we have a decorated general who is buried. I mean going back 1700s. And he was the uh, British Army Royal Engineer. And he was heavily involved in uh, defence projects here and abroad. And led a quite interesting life. And to actually find this character buried right under our noses is uh, quite astonishing. So I'm hoping people who like the military uh, History will enjoy this vlog. Welcome to Bingley Parish Church. Uh, a bit more in the neck, a bit more sort of my neck of the woods. Uh, fantastic place and uh, very, very nice inside as well. And we're here today to, it's a bit reversal this time because usually we leave the grave till the end of a film, but we wanted to try and explain uh, this chap that we're going to show you today. Um, and we're kind of working in reverse because there's quite a lot of information here. We'll try not to bore you and we'll try and pick out sort of the best bits. Uh, so if you want to come on into the church, we'll show you what we're on about. You'll see when we get inside what a wonderful place it is. Oh, nice heavy door. There we go. Well, it's my first time here. As you can see, it's quite spectacular. First impressions, absolutely amazing. It does feel yeah. like a, um, it feels like, almost like the Bradford Cathedral. Yeah. But uh, obviously a smaller scale, but it is uh, just as magnificent. Well, I'll use my torch in it, it's a bit dim. So. Yeah, no problem. So uh, it captures the atmosphere yeah. as well. So if we just, uh, obviously we need to be respectful because we're in a, a church and we will be careful. So, um, just down here, we have this magnificent memorial. Right, let's get a bit close. Okay. Now this gentleman um, is actually, well, he's called William Twiss. T-W-I-S-S. And on his stone there, it actually says General William Twiss. Now, he's a, he's, it's kind of a, an interesting story to him, and he's not technically a, a Bradford-born, Bingley-born person. He did live here uh, for about 20 years, and he died here as well. But it's his backstory, because he is related to this town due to marriage of his daughter. He had one daughter. And she married into the Ferrans family. And the Ferrans, uh, Walker Ferrand in particular, they are a very well-known name in these parts. Um, so by marriage, he has become part of our community, if you like. So if you look at the memorial again, I don't know if you can see at the top, there's like a castle and pointing out is a, a cannon. So, not, not everybody would actually know this, but um, he was one of the highest ranking officers in the Royal Engineers. Uh, we're not talking First World War, uh, or Boer War, or Crimean. We're going further back. So we're talking um, no, the Napoleonic Wars, and he was very influential in the defences of this country. So he was um, an engineer who designed and constructed what's called a Martello Tower. Now that's what's represented on his headstone there. So that is a Martello Tower. So I've been looking through archives to see what I could find out about General Twist, and I found a an image of him. So somewhere in storage or on display is an actual portrait of the man himself. And you can see he's got quite a Roman nose. 
Uh, the bridge of his nose is quite prevalent and as it is on the actual monument itself. Now, a Mantello Tower, we were talking about that beforehand. And you may have been to the seaside on the south coast. And you may have actually seen one. I know I've seen some, but never actually thought um, anything about them other than, you know, somebody obviously designed them, put them there and job done. So a Martello Tower looks like that. And it was a, a defensive fort that was on the beach. So it was actually uh, for a, a garrison uh, to make sure uh, they could repel any uh, invading fleet. So at that time, you're talking about 1800s through to about 1810, it's the Napoleonic Wars. So he had a threat of uh, uh, France invading. So he was looking at all the defensive side of that. And just out of interest, you can see inside one. So people lived in them. You had officers' quarters, men's quarters, storage, and then you had a gun platform on the top. So they're quite uh, compact buildings. Again, each floor had its own purpose. And when the tide came in, they were uh, like little islands. And that's an example there on the Kent coast of Martello Towers in the distance. So that's what you're seeing on that monument there. And that man was responsible for that engineering feat. One of many. And just by chance, a few years ago, I actually found one by accident and didn't know until this research. But there you go, that's an actual Martello Is that your own tower. picture? That is, I took that whilst on a holiday. And at the time you didn't know the background didn't know, to it? No, oh. didn't know that I actually lived in the area of where the man who designed the defences. Right. right under your nose, yep. yeah. So, yeah, that, I mean, the, you can see from this next picture how the sea level, so it was like a, an island when the tide came in. And anybody trying to come ashore would be uh, fired upon. So, yeah, fascinating man uh, who, um, his history is just unbelievable. To think, and he's buried in this place. Well, this is the thing. Um, there's always that doubt. Is that person actually here? Yeah, yeah. There's been all sorts of things happen with Bingley Church because, um, for example, the road goes right through the graveyard. Um, it was moved at some point. Uh, the road was put through and all the, the bodies removed. Uh, so there was that, well, has he been moved? But actually the headstone itself, I don't know if we can see this, do you want to take the torch? It might be a bit easier. Certainly. So, um, we did have it on here. You've got to kind of, it's quite hard to read, but there. So, is he, he's actually being interred in this church near the steps leading to the gallery. So, the gallery, the far side of the church here, would have been the private entrance of the Ferran family into the church, which would have been a gallery. Right. So it's very possible that he's buried somewhere under the church at that side. So we think the gallery was on this side of the church. This would have been where the Ferran family would have come in, like a private entrance on the outside of the church into the building. If that's the case, then our general twiz is buried somewhere. It could be. It could be in a vault underneath. Um, it's it's hard to tell. Obviously, we're we're not going to go I mean, searching. It's that long ago as well. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, the building has changed on that side at some point, and we'll try and show you that. We have an old picture that we can show you the comparison of. So, looking back at uh, General Twiss's um, history, it was quite a remarkable man. And if he was applying for a job today, any of us would have to supply a CV. So I put a CV together 
the general twist and well it's wow factor um, it's probably overqualified for most of the jobs that we have today but what we wanted to do was maybe pick out one or two points and then we can put this on somewhere in the film uh, or a link so you can read it because it is quite compelling and this man um, has contributed to the history of this country more than you would actually know so for example okay we said that it wasn't a Bradford or Bingley man uh, we think he was born in Kent in uh, 1745 roughly but uh, he died at Harden Grange in Bingley in 1827 so he lived in Bingley for 20 years uh, and we'll show you where later on in the film he started life in 1760 in the Ordnance Office of the Tower of London and gradually worked his way through the ranks, which was it's quite fast in the, the amount of time. Uh, so, for example, his first appointment was uh, Gibraltar, at the Rock of Gibraltar, working on um, the defences. So here we go, we're going into the uh, defence work as uh, before becoming Royal Engineers. So he kept gaining different um, commissions. Uh, he was employed at Portsmouth Dockyards, for example, which a lot of the Portsmouth Dockyards are still here today and then still in use. So a lot of his work is still in existence. We can then go back to the American War of Independence he travelled with the army to uh, North America, uh, to Quebec, and he was part of the big push to get America out of Canada. So he was quite an influential person at that time, and he was, he was even asked to set up um, a naval fleet to fight off the enemy. He became a prisoner of war. Just out of interest, uh, the connection with Twiz and Bingley, uh, as we've mentioned, he married in, uh, his daughter, his only daughter married into the Ferrand family, and it was Walker Ferrand, and his memorial is in him in the church as well, and I don't know if you can see that, that fine standing man there is Mr Walker Ferrand Esquire. Born 1780 and died 1835, as the stone implies. Um, he has his own amazing history, to be honest with you. He was a, an MP, uh, captain in the army, major, lieutenant colonel of the Bradford local militia. So, uh, yeah, he has his own story. So I thought what we do now is go around the other side of the church and I'll show you where we think the gallery was um, there were some changes and I can show you a comparison on a picture. Um, it's a lovely church you can see I mean there's quite a lot of headstones um, whether you approve of or not being laid down but uh, to be honest with you at least they're here. Um, some of these are probably from the main road because when they actually cleared the graveyard these were probably left over some of these. Yeah. In fact, we'll show the viewers the other side of the road. Yeah, um, can do. Um, most people will know the busy Bingley Main Road going straight through. Um, what's what happened? Was um, it was for the? I believe it was for the trams. The tram route. They had to find a straight stretch, and of course, it couldn't go down the old Bingley Main Street past the White Horse because it was cobbled and quite dangerous. So we put the new route through for that reason. But uh, yeah, there's still quite a few graves in here. Um, but um, so our man, I think he's under here somewhere. There's obviously a vault um, underneath this building. There always is with churches, there's some sort of vault. So I think there'll be the Ferrand vault in there, but then again, there are quite a few ferrons buried over there. So, but I'll show you. You can see when we get to the top of here, 
you can see the, the other graveyard at the other side of the road. Right, let's just go across and have a yep. look. So as you can see, there's quite uh, an expanse of graveyard still left, but where we stood and the road used to be still part of that and all the bodies were exhumed and up on the top of Bailey Hill there is actually Bingley Cemetery, there's another cemetery up there and I believe a lot of the remains they found a, a plot for up there so they were all moved and I know when you go into the cemetery up there there's some really old gravestones yeah, I think it's on your left hand side I've they're been there slightly yeah. out of place yeah. which would suggest that it probably came from this they look work. quite, yeah, the different type of stones, headstones yeah. and designs. You've got a lot of these, what I call tabletop types, Yeah, that's it. Uh, which are hidden in the trees. Yeah. So I think they've probably moved from this uh, engineering works here, of putting the road in. So again, just looking at archive footage, um, I was trying to find out what the gallery would have looked like on this side of the church and um, we have a picture there now you'll see an entrance there and above it is the Ferrand family crest so that would have been the private entrance for the Ferrand family to come and use the church and you'll see now that it's not there anymore there's obviously a, a more modern structure on yeah, the side just, just there yeah yeah now that's my thinking is that that is where General Twist is. There must be something underneath there. Uh, if that was the entrance to the gallery, the gallery would have been just beyond that. So you more or less into the church itself. So yeah, that's, um, but I have one last thing just to prove that is here. So this is an extract from the burial records. William Twiss, General of the Royal Engineers, died at Harden Grange, 21st of March, uh, 1827, and he was 82 years of age. So he's definitely in this church. And those who believe in the Wikipedia, it's on there as well. <laughs> I think we're a little bit clearer. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm glad to say. We like to try and prove things if we can. I know. So yep, yeah, there he is. So this is the official record from the church. This is where our story comes to a bit of an end because this is where General Twiz passed away in 1827. Now, it gets a bit complicated this because in 1827, this house, which is today known as the St. Ives Estate, was actually Harden Grange and it changed its name. So, he did die at Harden Grange, but actually today we stood at St. Ives. I hope that hasn't confused you. But, so you can see in the background, the, uh, what was Harden Grange, but is now known as St. Ives. <laughs> so, this was the home of Walker Ferrand at the time. And in the film, we show you his uh, memorial stone in Bingley Church. And again, just to show General Twist, who died here in 1827. So welcome to Myrtle Park. Yeah, and uh, some people might recognise the sign, Bingley Town Hall. Right. So as we walk up here, you'll be able to see the town hall. But in a previous life, this was the house of General Twiz. So up to his death in 1827, this is where he lived for 20 years. The thing is, we were looking for, uh, the historians say that he died at his residence at Harden Grange. Well, yeah, he died at Harden Grange, but that was his son-in-law's residence. Right. The Walker Ferrand. Yeah. On uh, an article that I found from 1867, 
it points out that this was the general's home officially. So you reckon this is just one property? Is that what you're saying? Or? It was one property at one, one point in time, yes. All right. So you can see uh, Georgian style manor house. It would have been quite posh and the park area of Myrtle Park would have been his garden. All this here? Yeah. So this was known as Myrtle Grove, hence the name of the road up to it. 1770, Myrtle Grove. Built by one of the bus fields. Again, bus fields, ferrons, all over Bingley. But he must have occupied this at some point, uh, General Twiss, uh, for 20 years. Um, the reason why this has come to light is that I found an article when it was for sale. So the Myrtle Grove Estate, Bingley, it's dated 1867 and it mentions formerly the residence of General Twiss. Yeah. For me, that's proof that this yeah. was where his home was. So he died at Harden Grange, 1827, at his son-in-law's house, but this was his permanent residence whilst living in Bingley. So that concludes the story, Andrew. Thanks very much. Yeah, well, I can tell you one last thing. For people that live down south in the sort of the Kent area, he actually has road names after him. But also, before the roads were named, he also had a fort named after him as well. Right. Again, based on his defences that he used to build and design. So the story is still out there. It ends with his death, 1827, but actually his story continues in all the things that yeah. he's constructed, not just here, but throughout the United Kingdom, uh, including Ireland and over in Canada. So, yeah. Just left, um, a, left a legacy behind. Just yeah. strange that yeah. we've, you know, we, this is a story that needed telling. Yeah, there's, um, a, lot, there's a lot of uh, aspects of the story, obviously. We missed quite a bit out because the guy had a, quite a big CV. Yeah, yeah. So we, we hope to publish some of that along with this story so you can see how many accolades this man uh, gained throughout his life, uh, the, the story from A to B. All right. Okay, okay Andrew, yep. on to the next vlog.